In this video, I'm going to show you how you can enforce server-side resource packs for your server. In the last video, I showed you how you can use PaperMC's modern API to create items with custom textures and 3D models. You can click in the top right if you are interested in that. And this tutorial assumes that you already have a resource pack ready. And to enforce our server-side resource pack to a player, we first need to get a reference to our resource pack. In PaperMC, you can do that with a resource pack info interface. Let's just call it pack info and create a private static variable for that and then let's assign that in the on load method of our plugin we want to do this as optimized and as asynchronous as possible so we're going to use the resource pack info builder and on that we're going to use the compute hash and build method that returns a completable future and calculates the hash of the pack for us so we don't have to do it so let's create the computable future variable for that final completable future it returns a resource pack info and now we're going to use the builder the resource pack info builder to set the id of our pack for the uid you could just use uid.random uuid this will change the uuid on every plugin start but a better way to do that is to use a hard-coded uuid value you could use the uuid of your player profile for example if you don't know it just go to namemc.com and search for your profile mine is this one click on it and then copy make sure you copy the version with the dashes in between and then just call from string and paste it here. Now the next thing we need to add to the resource pack info is a URL where the client can download the pack from. So this means that you have to upload your resource pack somewhere. You could use mcpacks.net for example or any other service that lets you upload files like Google Drive or GitHub. I'm going to use this for this tutorial. So select your file and this is my pack that I'm going to upload. So first you need to zip it and then upload it to here. Then click upload and now you can see we get our download URL, copy that and the hash that we need. But we're going to compute that ourselves with the paper API. Then back inside the builder, do yuri.create and paste your URL here. And then since futures are used for asynchronous operations, we cannot just do future.get. This will block the current thread. We Instead, we do future.then accept. As you can see, this expects a consumer with a resource pack in Info. So create the consumer and inside here we can do pack info equals pack. Then for the next thing we want to listen for incoming player connections and in PaperMC you can do that with a new event that has been introduced a few versions ago and this event is called async player connection configure event. So create a new listener for that public void on configure async player connection configure event and this is a new event you can see it is still experimental this is why it has a yellow on Line, and this event fires during the configuration phase of a player. So this means before the player joined the server, this event fires and inside here we're going to set the resource pack. And then if the player decided to reject the resource pack, then we can just decline the connection and then the player hasn't even joined the server. And with this we can make sure that only players that accept our resource pack can play on the server. So first let's get the connection with final player configuration connection connection and this is equal to event get connection. As you can see, all of this is experimental as well. And if you want, you can remove those warnings with add suppress warnings, then unstable API usage. And now we can send the resource pack with connection get audience. And in PaperMC, audiences are the interfaces that provide the send message methods, show title and so on. And as you can see, if you open the player class, this extends from human entity, this from living entity, this from damageable, this from entity, this from command sender, and this extends from audience. So we can just use our audience in this listener to send the resource pack with send resource packs. Then we need to create a resource pack request. We can do that with resource pack request dot resource pack request to get the builder. And then we can provide our resource pack with dot packs. You can actually send multiple packs with that, but we're just going to use one pack. And in here pass our pack info from the top here. So pack info and put that on a new line. And now we want to define actions for what happens when the player accepts or when the player denies. And we can do that with dot callback. Then inside here we need to pass a new callback and we need to wrap that in resource pack callback dot on terminal. And as you can see, this accepts two consumers, each of which have two parameters. That's why they are by consumers. The first one is the UID. This is the UID of the pack, the one that we defined up here. And the second parameter is an audience and this is 
the player that is currently trying to join the game. The first one is the success callback and the second is the failure callback. So let's first create the success callback. As you can see, we have two parameters. The first one is the pack ID. The second one is the audience and then just create the body and the same for our failure callback. And then inside here, we can do anything we want. Executed when player accepts pack and this is executed when player rejects pack. And since this is asynchronous, which you can see by the async keyword right here, or if you open the event by the super constructor call, true means that this event is async. And because of that, we can safely block this thread from any further execution until the player has made a decision. And just like above, we can use a completable future. If you remember, I told you we want a non-blocking way for this so that our plugin doesn't stop here and loads. And that's why we use the then accept method, but we can use the future.get or the future.join join methods to block the thread and wait for a response. And this is exactly what we're going to do in the listener. So let's create a new completable future. This time we're waiting for a boolean. And we're just going to say if the player accepts, this boolean will be true. And if the player rejects the pack, then this boolean will be false. So let's just call it accepted future, for example. And this is a new completable future. And then to stop execution on this asynchronous thread, we can use our accepted future and call the join method on that. This blocks the thread until the completable future has received a value. And we're going to update the values in the success callback and in the rejected callback. For the success callback, we want to do accepted future.complete. This is how you provide a value to the completable future. As you can see, we need a Boolean because we specified the completable future with a Boolean generic up here. Since this is executed when the player accepts the pack, we're going to pass true here. Then the same for the rejected method, but in here we're going to pass false. And then you can see the join method returns a boolean and this is the boolean value that we set inside our callbacks with the dot complete method so let's get that value final boolean accepted is equal to this and if the player has not accepted then we're going to deny the connection with connection dot disconnect and inside here we can pass a message for example component dot text you need to accept our resource pack to play here in red color and now let's put the plugin on the server, then let's join the server. And before that, make sure that you go to your resource pack settings and check that you don't have any resources packs here. This makes testing easier. Then go to multiplayer, select the server without joining first, then click on edit. And for the server resource packs, make sure it is set to prompt. This setting will display the dialog that lets us accept or reject the resource pack. Click done and join the server. Okay, this didn't work because we forgot to register the listener. So quickly go back to the plugin, create an on enable method, get server, get plugin manager, register events, this, this, and implement listener. And now join. And you can see we now have this dialog that asks us to download the resource pack. We can accept or deny. Let's first deny. And here we get our custom deny message. And now for our second attempt, we need to edit because Minecraft automatically set this setting to disabled now. Let's set it to prompt again and try to join again. Now let's click yes and you can see we are allowed on the server and if you check our resource packs we have that here and we cannot disable it. And if you want to get server resource packs of any other server for whatever reason I'm going to show you how you can do that. First go into your pack folder then go one directory up and go to the downloads directory. And here you can see this is the ID that we have chosen for our resource pack info object and inside of that we have another file. This if you recognize that this is the the hash that we got from mcpex and this is the actual resource pack directory as a file and you can unpack that by duplicating it then renaming and just append dot zip in the end confirm and now you can unzip it and as you can see this is our resource pack with all the files 